Hello everyone, this is Mary Ann from Revealing Light Tarot. Thank you for all your wonderful comments yesterday. It was absolutely lovely. Um, so thank you. Um, okay, so moving right along, I've had requests to read on Felix Sater, who's, uh, as we know, will be addressing the House Intelligence Committee uh, next week. Now, Felix Sater, if you don't know, was born in Russia. He's involved in the, or uh, is individual two, in relation to the Trump uh, Tower um, project in Moscow. So Cohen had a bit to say about Felix Sater, including that uh, Trump's, um, I think, potentially lying on his deposition in 2013 that he didn't know Sater. Sater, of course, joined Bayrock uh, and had a... Um, suite in Trump Tower uh, and has uh, really been negotiating, involved uh, between uh, the Trump organisation and Russia uh, in 2005, also uh, tried to get a Trump Tower there as well, or a skyscraper of some description. Um, Sater has, allegedly, has connections with the Kremlin. He took Don Jr. and Ivanka over there, I think, in 2006. Um, he's a person at the centre of the Mueller investigation as well. Uh, he's potentially a very important link between Trump, the Trump, Donald Trump, the Trump Organisation, and Russia and the Trump Organisation's business in Russia. So don't forget we had Don Jr., or was it Eric Trump, saying... Uh, a lot of our money can't, is coming from Russia. A lot, we do a lot of business in Russia. Um, so the House Intelligence Committee under Adam Schiff, Felix Sater, will be testifying. So the things that I want to know, um, what will he contribute uh, to really establishing whether Donald Trump knew him or not? If he's asked, obviously he's going to say, yes, he did. How long have you known Donald Trump? Early 2000s or whenever it was that he joined Bayrock. Um, and that will establish that Trump actually lied in that deposition in 2013. So... Is that something he's going to bring forward? What other new information is he going to bring forward around that Trump Tower uh, in Moscow, negotiations, communications, etc.? Sater has been an FBI informant. Uh, he's spent uh, time in jail uh, and has been an FBI informant in the past. So he would know, uh, he would know exactly what his options are. Uh, and he'd be playing uh, playing those options so that he can, uh, for the maximum benefit for himself. So let's have a look. Let's draw some cards and see um, what Felix Sater will bring to the table during that congressional hearing. What are the general, what's he likely to bring forward? What sort of information is he likely to bring forward? Felix Sater, House, uh, uh, House Intelligence Committee... Congressional hearing, what information, what type of information, what information is Felix Sater likely to bring forward on Donald Trump, the Trump Organization, and dealings with Russia? So I'm getting that uh, because of his ties to the Kremlin, um, He will, hold, he will hold back as much as he can. We don't know who's gotten to him beforehand. It would have been likely that uh, someone has. However, he's in the same position as Cohen. He's uh, a central figure. While we know he hasn't broken the law at this point, um, he probably has less to, uh, uh, less to lose than Cohen. So he may very well hold things back. But let's have a look. So we've got the King of Cups here. Um, so who was supporting who? Okay, somebody was supporting somebody else. Now I'm using my Gilded Tarot deck by Cairo Marchetti, for those that are wondering. Endings, rock bottom endings is what's challenging him. So he has information to bring forward on potentially who was supporting who uh, and why but he will be challenged by endings. Why? Have they gotten to him? That was my feeling. When I say gotten to him, he's potentially part of all that uh, part of all that network, so it would be just communicating, getting his story straight, etc., potentially. 
But that is his challenge. He's afraid. So anything that he, he discloses, he's afraid, will be his own painful ending. The foundation of this uh, reading is the Queen of Wands, and that, uh, to me, is the Congress. So even though he will try and hold things back, what he has to remember is that uh, co the congressional power, uh, they, these are lawmakers, um, and he will be bound by the power of the Congress. Um, and they, to me, they're going to go after the hidden stuff. I think that's why they want him to appear. They will be doing a lot of digging around Trump's business connections with Moscow. Now, some of this I alluded to when I introduced this video. I think they're going to go there. Uh, and in the past, we've got the government here. We've got we've got Congress. So this is telling me straight away Congress is quite powerful. Now, again, we saw in the reading yesterday this oversight um, that the House is actually bringing forward. It's quite substantial. After this reading, I want to get on to um, an article by uh, that which quoted uh, Trump's former lawyer. Is it Ty Cobb? Uh, I want to get on to that. Now, we asked what information he would be bringing forward. We've got the betrayal card here. This is the thief in the night, the seven of swords, stealing into, uh, into this building uh, when no one's looking, taking a number of swords, leaving some uh, some there, but generally making off with uh, with things. This is generally done in secret. So, what's hanging over all of this? Who supported who is the central question? He's potentially going to try and hold things back because he is afraid. Uh, um, However, Congress is going to, to me, is going to go in there quite hard. Congress, Congress's powers right through this reading. So he's going to be forced into um, revealing what he knows around potential uh, deals uh, that have been made in a clandestine fashion. Hence, we've got the Seven of Swords. Yep, it's all about the Trump Organization's uh, business with Russia prior to 2016. And this is where Sater is so valuable for Congress because he goes back so far and he has direct information to bring in relation to the real estate deals. So this is where I think Schiff is going to go to. He's going to go to the real estate um, links between Russia and the Trump Organization. Real estate, that's what they're, that's what I think where they're going to focus. <coughs> now, the, the, um, the situation at the moment is the Democrats are on a, I would say, a winning streak. This is the card of celebrations. It's like the midterms happened and the Democrats took that to control of the House. They were able to, uh, to bring in that oversight. And people are happy about that. That's what they wanted. That's why they voted them in. This oversight of Donald Trump after two years of... Um, no oversight at all, uh, we're now getting this. And, and that is making, that's a relief for people. We don't have to worry so much about whether Barr will get to Mueller, Mueller will withhold certain things, all of those questions that we've been reading upon, which, of course, if you go back through our readings, shows that the Mueller report is pivotal in what in what happens. So there's not going to be a, I don't think there's going to be a holding back. Um uh, so what we've got now are these ongoing investigations um, and Cobb, Tr Trump's lawyer, is right about one thing. He said that these investigations will go on up to 2020. If Trump is re-elected, re will go on beyond that. So basically that midterm victory ensured that these investigations would continue now, uh, if Democrats take uh, take the election in 2020, uh, they will go beyond. Donald Trump's and the Trump family's life as they knew it uh, altered when he took when he won the presidency. They didn't know in the first two years. They were quite you know naive in a way as to the power of the lawmakers the structures that are in place, the democratic structures, quite naive uh, because they were doing things in those first two years that have generated investigations. Um, 
on top of what they've been doing in the past. So uh, coming into DC, all guns blazing, a head full of power, you know, I often liken Trump in those first few years as the mad conductor, uh, you know, absolutely drunk on his power. Uh, of course, that's all ended now. Uh, well, that illusion of power is ended. And, of course, we have people quite relieved, quite happy that the oversight is happening. The environment around is uh, is restriction in, in position. It's, uh, it's, well, this is the card of um isolation being isolated it can sometimes comes forward comes forward as the imprisonment card so the uh, scenario I was painting prior to the midterms is one view the scenario I'm painting now with the multiple investigations is what's creating an environment of restriction um, for uh, not just Trump, not just the Trump government, uh, not just the GOP, but for the Trump organisation, who are the Trump organisation. They're Donald Trump and Trump's children. Um, now, the hopes and fears. Okay, so we've got this competition uh, aspect of this card coming forward. So really, uh, the hopes and fears of all those actors that I've just mentioned uh, is is around the um, the house the house power the power of the house, which is in direct con contra con competition and indeed contrast uh, with their own uh, with their own power. Where do we look to these days? We look to the House for, for direction. Um, even Mitch McConnell's power in the Senate has been eclipsed to a certain degree as senators, GOP senators, read the wind and uh, and wonder if what they need to do to uh, be re-elected in 2020. So the whole landscape has changed and has, the power structures have shifted. Um, and this is what Felix Sater comes into. He comes into this environment. This environment, which is restriction, potential imprisonment, um, isolation of uh, of those who once held power, <laughs> um, and and those that uh, Felix Sater obviously is uh, potentially aligned with, things are going to be happening pretty quickly. It's going to be, and th and a lot's going to come forward because we've got the Eight of Wands now. I go back to Cohen's testimony before Cummings um, committee. Um, that was a, like a tsunami uh, coming forward. That went on for days and days and days. I'm not sure that Satyrs will be as powerful, but there will be certainly uh, the Democrats. They've done their homework. Schiff's committee have done their homework. They're gonna they're gonna be looking into the ties. Uh, between the real the real estate ties between Russia and the Trump organization and Donald Trump himself potentially the cover-ups here we go the cover-ups so you're going to get a focus on potential uh, perjury uh, in the past um, you're going to get a focus on the lies so Trump saying one thing when the facts are another um, And even Felix Sater, how he has lied in the past as well. So we're going to get the attempts to cover things up. That's what's going to be drilled down on. And uh, we're going to have this aspect of the Seven of Wands. Felix Sater is going to have his back to the wall. Uh, again, I go back to the beginning of the reading where uh, the information is around the support the support, the deals between um, two parties or, or, you know, Russia and Trump. But again, he is, uh, he is challenged by his own, um, I guess, anxiety around potentially what could happen to him if he, if he discloses, if he has full disclosure. So I feel he's going to try and hold something back, but then I, I go to the fact that he was an FBI informant. He's in a similar situation to Cohen in that um, he could be in, in legal peril as well. Um, however, 
I, th I do feel he's going to try and hold something back. How I think, though, that there will be information coming forward around those real estate deals and also around the potential cover-ups and uh, and potential lies that have been um, that have been uh, told by by Trump and and the Trump organization in relation to their dealings with Russia and indeed Trump's relationship with Felix Sater. So um, I'm going to uh, just ask one more question. Um, as a result of this, will Donald Trump have to face that perjury charge in relation to lying on his dep deposition about Felix Slater in 2013? Will he get pushback on that as a result of Slater's deposition for lying. It's interesting that he tells so many lies that some, at some point, karmically speaking, it's likely to come back on him and bite him on his... It has to. It has to. This is not a reality show. This is the spotlight is on Trump right now and on his line. So will Sater's uh, testimony establish uh, that Trump has lied on multiple occasions, possibly even perjuring himself? Yes, no, spirit. Oh, here we go, King of Cups again. Um, okay, so the deals, the deals that were done, the support that was given, the deals that were done, the lover's card, the deals that were done, the relationships between two people, Trump and Russia, secrets, high priestess, secrets to be revealed, two major arcana, deals, relationships, secrets to be revealed, lots coming forward, the eight of wands around that, the digging and the uh, this is you know the Queen of Wands to me has almost a an intuition an intuitive um, an intuitive aspect to her. Sometimes she comes forward around the women in Congress or the power of the women uh, that have have now entered Congress. Um, there's going to be some fairly uh, rigorous questions there to establish the relationships between uh, Trump and Russia, Trump Organization and Russia, and how they work together. This is the um, the card of expansion and commerce. It's mirroring the secrets underneath the secrets to be revealed. I'll bring the laptop down because these cards are quite interesting. We have the support here, what support was given. We've got the relationships that uh, may have existed. We've got the secrets here that that uh, uh, you know that have been held back. The covert nature of things that I was referring to. Lots of things coming forward and coming forward quickly, which was the outcome card of the previous reading. We've got the Democrats uh, digging, digging down, drilling down on the commercial, commercial and expansive aspects of the business between uh, the Trump Organization and Russia. Now, the Illumination card is our last card, and I'm just going to hold that there for a minute. The Sun card is comes forward when you're asking a question, a yes or no. So the Sun card can, can uh, you know, in all probability uh, mean yes. So this is going to establish the his uh, Felix Sater's testimony will establish the lies that have been told around uh, Trump's not uh, knowing him, the potential business that the Trump organization and Trump had with Russia. They're, this is going to be quite illuminating. Now, um, I will put a caveat here uh, because, you know, Life's not a merrily row, row, row your boat sometimes down the stream, is it? Felix Sater could be a could be could try and hold back information because he fears uh, he fears if he brings things forward, like Cohen did, and we saw what happened to Cohen. Um, so uh, I'm just going to. We'll give it a good shuffle and I'm just going to quickly ask what the GOP members on that committee are going to 
do? Are they going to react in a similar way? We're going to see more of the liar, liar, pants on fire <laughs> signage um, and the ridiculous questioning. It's like you would expect to come from a you know, 10 year old in the playground oops alright Jordan was a, a wasn't he a gym coach <laughs> I don't know Meadows background what was he <laughs> okay some kind of businessman probably um, Viewers, you can enlighten me. What what did Meadows do before he got to Congress? Um, I know that he's now uh, wanted to. Is he's being exposed? Lots of clips around him um, sending uh, Obama back to Kenya or wherever he was from. Um, I'm just going to just have a look here. Sorry, just bear with me. I'm just out of interest. Okay, so he's, uh, he's, he grew up in an army military background. He described his upbringing as poor. Mm. He, was, he said he was the fat nerd who went on a diet after being rejected by a date. Uh, rejected by a classmate. Um, yeah, okay. Now I'm starting to feel a bit of bit of uh, compassion for the man. He graduated from the University of South Florida with an Associate of Arts. He was later credit, credited by the Office of the Historian of the U.S. House of uh, Representatives as having earned a bachelor degree, but this was corrected after investigation by the Tampa Bay um, Times, and in December 2000 found that it was associate, an associate degree. Um, rightly so, degrees aren't everything, are they? But I don't see, uh, I don't see the experience there that I would have thought. Uh, so there we have Mr. Meadows. Um, who attack, who is an attack dog. And of course, uh, is surprised and upset and hurt when the attacks come back on him. So there are lessons there for Mr Meadows. All right, back, back to what we were going to uh, look at. And now I've forgotten my question. Let me just refocus. Ah, yes, the GOP. How are the GOP going to handle this uh, testimony by Felix Sater? What are they going to do? Are they going to get fed income? Are they going to ask a few decent, intelligent questions? Are they worried about Trump's connection with an adver adversarial... Um, uh, actor like Russia, are they worried about his foreign policy and potentially um, uh, impacting on um, US national security or US's best interests, or are they just going to come back with more of this political BS? How are they going to react? What are they going to do in the Congress when Felix Sader comes forward with his testimony? Okay, this is what they're feeling. They're feeling left out in the cold, okay? They're not on the inside running anymore. They're on the outer. What happens when people are on the outer? They're challenged by the amount and the um, the sheer drive of the Democrats of these investigations. Bang, 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 bang. They're challenged by that. So they're on the outside um, they're uh, hobbled, if you like, uh, by Trump himself, and they are challenged by the amount of uh, things that are coming forward. The foundation of the reading is their financial. It's their security. It's shoring up their power. What does their power mean? I don't know uh, for your politicians, but keeping power in Australia... Uh, results, it's quite lucrative. When they do retire from Congress, they're uh, paid a $200,000 pension for life. Um, and, but there's also other perks for being in office. I'm assuming that's similar in America. It's called a gravy train. Get on the gravy train. That's the foundation of the reading. 
this is where Trump's power is at the moment. This is in the past position. It's it's suspended. We know that the hangman has been coming forward in these readings quite a lot. Um, Page of Pentacles, money news. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about the monetary connection between Trump and Russia. And this kind this angle came forward in one of my recent readings. If Mueller has proof of a monetary connection between Trump and Russia, then the collusion case, conspiracy case, becomes amplified. Isolation. They're going to be isolated. Uh, this is the Hermit card. So. They will be talking about money. They were trying to stop any talk around the monetary dealings between Trump Organization and Russia. That's what they'll be trying to stop. But they're very much on the um, outer. Again, they'll be trying to protect their, their emperor, Trump. However, the environment around them is uh, is potentially what, is exactly why they're on the outer. Endings and beginnings for uh, for Trump, his power dwindling, um, and the GOP um, on the outer here. I was going to say on the nose, uh, and the eyes of the world looking. This is no small matter. What they fear, they fear uh, not being re-elected. They fear being, uh, that's the Six of Swords, moving on, relocation, transitioning. Um, and the outcome of this card is the Nine of Pentacles, which is interesting. It's around um, financial security. It's around um, self-government. Uh, it's around indolence in a way. So to me, they, they're going to be, here we go, they'll be juggling. Okay. All right. So this is what, and manipulating. So this is what this reading is saying. It will be more of the same with Cohen. They will be doing this juggling and manipulation. They don't want the information around Trump's financial, Trump organization's financial connections with foreign uh, countries. They don't want that drilled down on. Uh, they are very much on the outer. Their power in that committee is not as strong as obviously if they were leading it. Um, they will be trying again to protect their uh, their president. However, the um, the environment around is endings and beginnings. Uh, they're on the world stage now. This is very, very transparent. And, of course, for poor uh, Congressman Meadows, um, you know, they're looking a little bit dim-witted. All right, so um, I'm going... And they're very, very much isolated. Uh, isolated on the outer they're still energetically speaking and i'm just going to kick this reading up a notch to a spiritual um orientation energetically speaking this card is saying they're holding on to the past they're holding on to um their idea of power so they're stuck in that power matrix when uh you know, I either have it uh, or I don't, and when I don't, uh, I get terribly offended and um, I start to do, you know, I get awfully invested and emotional in this loss of power. That's where the GOP is at the moment. They, they feel like they're being kicked to the curb by uh, by the House, uh, and so they're, um, they're, you know, it's almost like a victimhood in a way, um, instead of stepping forward into their own power. I'll read more extensively on the GOP because I feel on the future of the GOP will the party still exist in the future um, in another reading. But uh, but really this is where they're at. This is where their energy is at at the moment. It's, it's around uh, falling back into that victimhood um, and, of course, lashing out in very petty, silly ways. Uh, they're not really learning the lessons, which means that there could be another big kick for them coming up uh, until they start to um, start to change and 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 move forward away from Trump. The Trump era is over. The sooner that they uh, start to examine the lessons um, and move forward, the better off for them. Not and I've said this before. Not every Republican is a bad Republican. Just those. Um, just uh, the way that we see these people in Congress, um, really they're shooting themselves in the foot. Suffice to say, the power structures as we know them 
uh, in this situation with Felix Slater lie with the Democrats and they'll be using them uh, during this testimony as they did with the Cohen testimony. So watch out for those um, star performances if that uh, testimony is made public. Uh, it will be interesting viewing again. Two things. Trump's lying and deals uh, real estate uh, connections with uh, Russia. They're, the, they're going to be the focus here and that Trump Tower project as well. I'm going to leave that there. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again for your wonderful support uh, and the lovely comments that came forward yesterday. It was kind of fun, that reading for me to do, um, and, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, all right. Thank you.